Every story has two sides, but what if you only heard one? How do you know if you're being protected by your parent or manipulated? I used to think I was being protected, that everything done was for my own good. But sometimes protection and alienation can look a lot alike. And once you're caught in the middle, the line between them blurs. Good. Hi, I'm Maddie and welcome or welcome back to the Anti-Alienation Project. I know I've been stepping back and taking a little bit of a break. I've been having some pretty severe health concerns, but I wanted to hop on here and make this video today. Here on this little corner of the internet, I talk about all things related to a certain form of child psychological abuse known as parental alienation. Why do I care about this in the first place? Well, I actually went through it starting around the age of eight and nine during my parents' divorce. My mom began to go on an obsessive rampage to manipulate me into rejecting my dad. It completely worked and I did this. I rejected him because I was made to believe terrible things, that he didn't love me, that he's selfish, narcissistic, bad, abusive, and I rejected him for the next 20 years without true justification. I learned the truth about two and a half years now. And anyway, I've, since then I've been on this journey to heal and rebuild my relationship with my dad and also speak out about this form of abuse. Not a lot of people know what it's called, but it's actually very common and you'll find people everywhere that have been through this. So that's a little about me. Let's get into today's video. Growing up, I heard a lot of stories about my parents stories maybe meant to protect me or at least that's what i was told i was made to believe i had one good parent and one bad parent i was told that my quote unquote bad parent was dangerous selfish unreliable and didn't love me that every minute i spent away from them was another bullet i dodged as a kid i believed everything that my good parent made me believe the fear felt real I'd been told all the horror stories so many times, I believe them. To me, they were real. But here's the thing. Sometimes what is supposed to feel like protection isn't protection at all. I didn't realize it at the time, but something was not adding up. There were too many secrets, too many questions left unanswered. This all started around the age of eight or nine. For the next 20 years, I believed all these lies. And I believed that my quote unquote good parent was truly protecting me from my other bad parent. Flash forward 20 years to 28 years old, one day I learned the truth and that shattered everything that I thought I knew. I started to wonder, had I been protected or had I been kept in the dark? Had I been manipulated? Had I been turned against someone who never had the chance to explain themselves? Parental alienation can look like a whole lot of different things. Sometimes it's obvious, bad mouthing, denigration, blatant manipulation, but other times it's very subtle. It can be disguised as protection. And that's where this gets really dangerous. The problem is who gets to decide what protection looks like? And when does protection cross the line into alienation? Is it when one parent constantly undermines and belittles the other? Or is it when a child is cut off from one of their parents without explanation? Told they're a threat but never explained why? The twist? Well, as I got older, I reached out. I asked my dad. I wanted to hear his side of the story. What I found was devastating. I was not protected. I was kept away. The parent that I was made to fear and made to believe didn't love me. The parent I thought had abandoned me had been fighting to see me the entire time. All of this begs a question. How can we differentiate between parents who are truly protecting their children versus parents who are alienating their children? I've done a lot of thinking about this and took a lot of notes. I've come up with the 10 main differentiators, in my opinion, that can point you in the direction of whether a parent is truly being protective or whether they are actually alienating. I know this is a hot topic right now because the term protective parent has really taken off in the course of control and domestic violence sphere. People have been proclaiming themselves as protective parents and I see a lot of this. So I think this video is really relevant and hopefully it can help some people differentiate between a parent who's truly protecting their child and wants the best for their child and a parent who is actually manipulating their child and trying to destroy that child's relationship with their other parent. 
Let's get into it. Number one, you got to look at that parent's motivation, the motivation behind their actions. A true protective parent will be genuinely concerned about the ch child's safety and well-being, taking steps to protect the child from harm, physical, emotional, or psychological. An alienating parent will act out of anger and spite, jealousy, resentment, desire for control, and they will use fear and manipulation to turn the child against the other parent without a legitimate cause. Here are some questions to consider when you're looking at the motive of the parent. How does the parent treat the co-parent? Does the parent isolate the child or try to control the child in any other ways? For example, controlling their medication, their food, or their social life? Number two, communication with the parents. A parent who's truly trying to protect their child will usually try to maintain open communication with their co-parent. Even if there are safety concerns, seeking professional mediation or supervised visitation, if necessary, the protective parent will do whatever they can to keep the child's parent, other parent out of their life is a last effort decision that the protective parent does not want to make. An alienating parent, on the other hand, will actively avoid communication and obstruct communication between the child and their other parent, as well as often refusing to co-parent or communicate well with the targeted parent. And they will coerce the child to reject that parent outright without justification. There's no actual threat that exists here in this parent-child bond. You have to remember that the alienating parent might be such a master manipulator that they might manage to convince the child their beliefs are their own, all of their decisions regarding the other parent are their own. In many cases, professionals and family members cannot rely on the child's words or beliefs to be facts due to the manipulation that has occurred. A parent who's truly trying to protect their child will encourage a healthy, positive relationship with their other parent as long as it's safe. They will encourage them to foster contact when appropriate and focus on the child's best interests. What an alienating parent do? You could probably guess it. They will actively discourage that child to have a relationship with their other parent. They will sabotage the child's relationship with the other parent. They will criticize and badmouth the child's other parent. They will instill fear and anger in that child towards their other parent. Think about what attitudes this parent displays in front of the child. What attitudes about their other parent do they display in front of the child? Do they ensure that the child feels loved and cared for by both parents? How much information about the marriage and the court case and what's happened between you two adults does the child know? If you haven't told the child this information, it's safe to say that the other parent has, which is a big sign of alienation. A healthy parent will realize that there are a lot of things, especially with marital issues, that children have no place knowing. With master manipulators, they might actually claim to be encouraging the child to see you or go with you, but they're really doing the opposite. I remember my own mom pretending to encourage me to go with my dad, but only to the right people at the right time, which was counselors and family therapy. Please be cautious and aware that these people, the highly pathogenic parents, know exactly what they need to say and who they need to say it to. Four, examine the handling of past conflicts. A protective parent will acknowledge past conflicts with the other parent, but will separate that from the child's relationship, not projecting their personal issues onto the child. The alienating parent, in contrast, will use past conflicts as a reason to keep the child away from the parent, bringing up old grievances constantly. Pay attention to how much of this information the child knows. Number five, the level of transparency. A protective parent is generally very transparent with their actions, willing to involve third parties, to help solve problems like a therapist or a court. An alienating parent, they're secretive. They're often hiding their actions from others. A lot of alienating parents will even hide medical records or educational records from the other parent. They might even fabricate and exaggerate situations to create a false sense of danger about the targeted parent. They are the opposite of transparent. However, 
if you do enough digging, if you talk to a wide enough array of people, you'll start to notice little inconsistencies, lies, things that don't add up. Number six is to examine the child's view of the other parent. So the protective parent will teach the child to view the situation realistically not painting the other parent as all good or all bad. A lot of healthy parents in this situation will try to make the child feel loved despite the fact that their other parent is doing a really lousy job of making them feel loved. A, a parent who's truly protecting their child will encourage their child to set healthy boundaries. They will not encourage their child to go no contact with their other parent. Okay, I know there are gonna be exceptions to every rule, but this is just in general. An alienating parent though, they in indoctrinate the child with a very one-sided view, <laughs> making the child believe that the other parent is evil, dangerous, selfish, crazy, and completely unworthy of the child's love. Here's some questions to consider when you're examining the effect that the parenting has had on the child. Does the child express any guilt? for rejecting their parent outright. When you ask a child what their targeted parent can say or do or change to improve the relationship, are they able to offer a suggestion? Do they maintain that the parent can't do anything? How black and white is the child's rejection? Are they refusing to see their targeted parent no matter what under any and all circumstances? An alienated child will outright reject their parent completely and there's really nothing that can be done to improve the relationship. An alienated child will often show little to no remorse or guilt for their behavior or their actions toward that parent, believing it's completely justified. These are key characteristics that differentiate whether a child has been manipulated or not. Number seven is the use of professional help. A truly protective parent will seek, seek help from professionals like family counselors, therapists, or social workers to ensure the child's safety and well-being and follow through with recommended solutions. They will try to use the professional help to improve the child's relationship with both parents. The alienating parent, on the other hand, might pretend that their motive is that of a protective parent. They actually avoid and undermine professional involvement. Unless, here's a caveat, unless they believe it will support their agenda or other interventions if they don't fit their narrative. It all depends on how the therapy is affecting the child and whether the therapist is questioning the alienating parent or not. Often these parents will get a new therapist if they're being questioned by the current one. That's as simple as that. They'll do a lot of doctor shopping, therapist shopping. Please keep in mind, these parents know exactly what to say, exactly who to say it to and when to say it. They're very smart, a lot of these people. They will often pretend to comply with professionals. They will often pretend that they're trying to help their child, especially if they're more covert they're actually trying to manipulate the professionals. A simple way that alienating parents can easily manipulate the professionals and that they do this almost every single time is that they have to be the first one to approach the professional. Whether that's a doctor, a therapist, a teacher, a social worker, no matter what, they have to be the first one to approach that person and spread the lies and the narrative about the targeted parent being bad, horrible, mean, selfish, whatever their specific narrative is, they tell the professional that first. It's a phenomenon in psychology where if you're the first person to tell somebody something, it colors their view of it and you're more likely to be believed than anyone else who refutes that narrative down the line. So this is an easy way that they spread their narrative about the quote-unquote bad parent to all the professionals and in that way the alienating parent has a way better chance of actually controlling the entire situation from day one. If you can, please get to those professionals first. Do what you can to talk to them first and squash the lies in it before they start. Number eight is the response to the child's emotions. A truly protective parent will validate the child's feelings, try to help them work through them and comfort the child, support the child. If the child misses the other parent, a truly protective parent will try to help the cope in a healthy way, help them express their emotions and make sure they, they feel loved and cared for either way. An alienating parent, how do they respond to the child's emotions? Let me give you examples from my life. Their alienating parents will actually exploit their children's emotions, which is 
horrible to do to anyone, but especially your own child. They will often amplify the fear or the sadness the child is feeling about the targeted parent instead of comforting them, instead of making them feel loved and cared about regardless. They will exploit the child's emotions and make the child feel guilty for wanting a relationship with the other parent. The alienating parent will often do whatever they can to amplify the child's negative emotions. I lived through this for 20 years. Whether I experienced fear or sadness or anger about my dad, my mom did not comfort me. She didn't make sure that I knew I was lovable anyway, I was worthy anyway. No. She instead would reinforce how bad he was, how sad she was for me that he didn't love me. She would reinforce how lucky I was to have her. At least I have one parent who loves me. They will absolutely exploit the child's emotions. Number nine is a willingness to co-parent. True protective parents have a willingness to co-parent. They want to find constructive solutions. They don't want their child to lose their other parent. Even when it's difficult, they will prioritize the child's needs over their own. And this is one that can really help if you're wondering if somebody is a true protective parent or not. Because look at their willingness to co-parent and their willingness to want that child to have their other parent in their life and not whether they say they do because they might just very well say whatever they need to say but whether their actions show that that's what they want. An alienating parent will refuse to cooperate with their co-parent seeing them as their adversary, their enemy. They might outright reject any attempts to co-parent or they might make unilateral decisions about the child's life. This goes hold to with holding information and not keeping the other parent in the loop. The last differentiating factor between a protective parent and an alienating parent, in my opinion, is their behavior after court decisions. A protective parent will respect court decisions and custody agreements. Even if they disagree, they will respect the court orders and custody agreements. They will use legal means to address issues of concerns. An alienating parent. What do they do? Well, they will frequently disregard court orders, disregard custody agreements, make excuses, withhold visitation, not follow through with custody orders, and escalate conflicts despite legal rulings. Custodial interference as well is super common. This is something that really enforced the alienation for me as a child is that my alienating parent convinced me to do the rejecting by making me believe these certain terrible things. Law enforcement has a really difficult time forcing kids to go with a parent who they claim is abusive, they claim is bad or scary, and that's Another tactic that alienating parents use. To find out more about custodial interference, there's a really good page on Facebook called Interference with Child Custody Coalition. They have a lot of good information and they're really good at helping parents whose custody is being interfered with. The steps you need to take with law enforcement to get that on the record and to handle custodial interference. Here's the thing. Sometimes parental protection absolutely necessary, absolutely real. There are parents who pose a danger to their children, but sometimes what looks like protection is actually control. And the person who suffers most, the child, the child who's caught in the middle, the line between protection and alienation, sometimes it's razor, razor thin. And it's not always easy to see when you're in the middle of it. But once you've been on the wrong side of that line, it changes everything. If you're a parent, please ask yourself, are you truly protecting your child or are you controlling the narrative? What are your motives? And if you're a child like I was, know this. The truth always has a way of coming out no matter how hard someone tries to bury it. I learned all of this the hard way and now I will never let anyone else control my story again.